Hi Felters and welcome. This is just a quick update on how it's going with the drum carder. So it's got the two wheels. Um, this is a brush which holds down the wool. So you always have that down when you're putting the wool in and you tighten it up. The wheel goes round uh, both ways. It's really easy to use. This helps you attach it to the bench. I'll show you that in a minute. You just put it in one of the holes there. So it stops it moving around. Now this is, I think, a doffer. So this video is not me teaching you. This is just letting you know some of the things I found out. And so use the doffer. You'd put it along that steel strip when you're getting the wool off. This is a cleaning brush, which um, fits underneath. So it's really, really handy. I'll show you how to use that later. So my one is a wild card. So it's like a mini one. It's about six inches across. There we go. I've attached it to the table and it has to be slightly off so that the handle goes round. So that's something you have to consider about the position of where it is. So I'm just showing you I've been using it for about two months now and this is a mixture of greys. So the reason why I like it is I can mix up the colours and the textures that I want for in particular Highland Cows, Herdwicks, things like that. So I'm using a mixture of carded and tops. I'm feeding it in very slowly. There's a lot of mixed advice on this. Some items, some bits of wool go in really, really well. But if you start to feel the resistance, you should definitely slow down. And see that mini uh, drum in front of you? If you start to get wool on that, it's you're going too fast. There's also a thought that if you put it in, see I'm putting it in with the tops pointing towards it. There's also a thought that you can put the tops in going across, but I prefer this way. So I'm, you can see it all sort of going onto the drum. There's quite a lot on there. I also like to hold it on the top and feed it in slowly. So you really, really have to hold it very tightly when you do this, but it's another way of mixing the colors. And I sort of do a bit of a mixture of both. So here it is, it's all done. I don't overload it because I'm not sure how much it will take. So you use the doffer or an awl, some people call it an awl. Um, you lift up the brush first, so you pop it along and then you, you pull it out. Pull it, um, it's sort of, you're breaking uh, the wool apart here. And then if you take it right backwards um, and down, so you're going to turn it and it's going to sort of feed its way off. Now the needles are pointing slightly downwards so if you get it right backwards and down where I'm doing it there on the bar it should come off quite well. doesn't always happen like this. This one actually came off really well which is nice because I'm just showing you how it all works. Um, and then you can buy a porcupine quill or things like that to sort of get the bits off but I just use the doffer. But do you see I love the mixture and the texture and I just used up loads of bits of old wool and you could see that being a really nice Herdwick coat so here's some that I sort of mixed up um, yeah from this point of view I'm super pleased with it and I can even because it's got carded wool in it I can even felt it um, so it's not sort of as a long coat effect so I tried it with this is actually you know what they're properly for is for carding sheep's wool as it is once you've washed it. So I broke it up quite a bit. Now I found that when I was doing this wool I could feed it in quite fast and it didn't get stuck at all but it does you, it does take time to sort of stretch it all apart. Now these locks that I have um, was good really because I washed them and they just weren't that nice uh, for me to use as a long coat effect and I'm like well what can I do with them? How? Because it's quite hard to just simply felt these. So if I card it up first, you'll see I get a nice lofty felt. Um, it just takes a little bit of time and I just get a cup of tea and I sit there doing it. So it's gone from that to that. Now that is really useful for me. I can definitely use that. And here I am felting it up. This is a valet wool. So it's really thick. Um, so, But I could definitely use it as a core wool or even I could take that and use it as a coat wool effect, sort of as a long wool. So now I'm just going to do two carded colours. These are Bergschaft and I'm going to mix them together because this is, you know, commonly what I would do is to create a colour that I want. So you feed in a little bit of one colour, a little bit of the other, alternate all the way through. And I'm just going to see how well it mixes. Sometimes I don't think the carded wool on its own works brilliantly. I wonder if it breaks it down even more, but this does work, but you'll see... Uh, to mix it properly, you have to 
do it several times. So mine is a wild card, which is a mini. You can see the colours there not mixed that well. It's starting. So I then take this and I feed this through uh, bit by bit. So you kind of think, yeah, it takes a while, but it's a lot easier than sitting there with carding brushes for me because it would take forever. And I can do a nice big piece that is a consistent colour. Um, so yeah, I do I do think it works well, but we'll show you the colours. So that's uh, the second time through and it's pretty good, but I think I put it through once more. Yeah, so I've got mine uh, second hand off eBay for £180. So there we go, that's the mixed colour and I'm pleased with that. So those two colours have mixed up to that. It's got a fairly good mix and if I was to felt that down... I think that would look quite good so yes you can mix colors and now this is just a fun one because lots of people are doing these sort of um, fun art bats so I'm just doing one that I would use for um, grass now the the um, carding machine I've got has got 72 teeth per inch so it can take a lot of the bigger pieces, this is what it was sort of invented for. If you've got one with, say, 120 teeth per inch, I think that's just for the finer walls. So that's why I was really happy to get my one as well, because I know I can throw most things through it. You can put a ribbon through it, apparently, and stuff like that. So um, I'm putting some of the tops in. I always try and throw some carded wool in with a mix that I might be doing, because it makes it more manageable for me if I want to card it down. Um, so that's the carded, that is a fine merino carded actually, so it's a really nice wool. Now the locks, when I put them in, I really broke them up quite a bit and the carding machine really sort of pulled with them. Uh, so here you see I, it slows down, you can feel it. So if you start to feel it, really slow down and let it do its thing. So I've sort of been watching quite a few videos on this. Um, but I think it's just trial and error. You know, there's no sort of wrong or right way of doing things as long as you don't break your carder. Um, but as you can see, yeah, so if it starts to get stuck, it's not having enough time to mix it all. Um, and yeah, so I was really pleased with this one when it came out. So it's nice to use up. I used that one as well. I added a little bit of light in. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, it's good to do the fun mixes too. So uh, for me, it's absolutely perfect for what I want it for. I think this comes off fairly cleanly as well. It's really nice when it all comes off properly in one go. It, it looks beautiful. So I'm not saying you should all go out and get a carder. I'm saying you should find somebody who's got one. <laughs> go and talk to them and see if you can borrow it for a bit. If you want to do um, any mixes. This is how you clean it with the cleaning brush. Um, and not much was left on this one. But yeah, mine's an Ashford Wild Carder, which is small. It's only six inches across. And so you've gone from all of those colours to that, which I think is, you know, a lovely mix um, and perfect for the things I want to do uh, with it. And then the best mix that I've made is this Highland Cow Colour from Four Colours. And it's not about just the colour. For me, it was about the texture of it to make it look like a coat. And so it didn't keep getting matted so when you use the fine merinos they get quite matted eventually so yeah I I have been super pleased with it um, I'm going to keep using it you might see it in my studio vlogs but any questions pop them down below but I hope this has helped if it's something you're thinking of purchasing um, but yeah really really enjoying it so speak to you soon everybody take care